Hi students. In this video, we're going to go over how you handle the machining of castings and inseparable assemblies in the CAD world. On the screen in front of you, you see a model that looks very much like the blank for a connecting rod in a car engine. In this model, we have extra material so that when we cast this shape, the molten metal can pour through the mold easily. Once the object has cooled and hardened, we take it out and we do our finishing operations. So let's see how we do that in the CAD world. First, I'm going to create a new assembly. And then I'm going to bring in my connecting rod casting. Now I'm going to float it and I'm going to mate it to the principal planes in my assembly file. I'll choose the cylindrical face, I'll mate, and I want to choose axis 1. Okay, so that's a good mate. And I'll choose this top face, that plane, I'll say OK. That looks pretty good. So now the only degrees of freedom we have left are rotation. And you can actually use some of the planes to make them coincident. So for example, I can put the right plane from the connecting rod and the right plane from the assembly on top of each other. I'll say parallel. OK there. Now my part is fully defined and it's locked in space. Let's turn off some of these planes and axes, make the screen a little less busy. There, that's much nicer. So we can see we have our connecting rod at the assembly level. Now we're going to put our features in. I'm going to click on that face and I'm going to say insert, assembly feature, and I'm going to use my hole wizard. Now I'm imagining that I'm going to put in the crankshaft hole where this connecting rod will connect to the crankshaft. I'll choose a simple hole. I'm going to make a large hole, so I'll do custom sizing. Two inches in diameter. I'm going to click off to the side, as I usually do. And then I'm going to apply a concentric relation. Oops, well, it allows coincident. That's fine as well. As long as I merge the center of this outer edge and the center of my circle. There we go. That's very nice. While this is not exactly what a car engine does, this is how you perform features at the assembly level. I'm going to do the same thing at the other end where I would make a hole for the wrist pin. I'll say insert, assembly feature, hole wizard. I'll do a simple hole again. Come down, I'll make this one one inch in diameter. Position it. This time it did allow me to do concentric, and I'll say OK. Now down here in the part manager, you can see that the holes are not labeled correctly, so we're going to fix that. Now our features match a part manager, and that would be an acceptable part. In the real world, we would probably do a machining operation to clean up these faces, but conceptually, that's how it's done. Now let's go on and talk about your Stirling engines. 
close those parts. So we're going to do the same thing on your Stirling engine. You can imagine this being a weldment. In your case, you might want to glue it together, but that's fine. So right in here, we're going to want a radius face that will match the can very nicely and create an airtight seal. So I've brought in my elbow and my bushing. You notice there's no negative sign, so they're fully constrained in space. And again, I will use this face, and I'll put a hole on it. So I'll do Insert, Assembly Features, go to my hole wizard. I'm going to do another custom hole. Can's approximately 2.8 inches in diameter. Click on the Position tab. And this time, I use Smart Dimensions. Say 2.81. Oops, I have that backward. I apologize. Let's make that zero. So the hole lines up. Now we're going to do 2.81 as our offset. And I'll say OK and OK. So again, we're going to fix our part manager. And you can see by putting the hole out here, we've created a very nice radius surface that will create a nice gas tight seal for our Coke can. Okay, so that's what I'm expecting you to do on your projects. So we'll close this and we're going to do one more example. Ah, the Coke can. So the Coke can, we're going to do this the same way. Let's imagine that we want to create the upper can that has the window that holds the crankshaft. So we're treating this Coke can just like a part that we would have cast in industry. And we want to clean it up and put our final dimensions on it so it's ready for installation. I'm going to create a new assembly. I'll bring my can in. I will mate it in position. I'll use axis one to the cylindrical face of the can. Oh, I got caught. I have to float it first. Now let's try again. There we go. So now axis one in our assembly file is cylindrical with the face of the can. I'll say OK. That's quite nice. Then we'll make the bottom of the can to the top plane. I'm not sure which of these planes is actually in my assembly file. So I'm going to click on the Part Manager icon in the upper left. And I can just highlight my planes. Ah, I see there's the top plane. I'll choose Coincident. Say OK. So now the bottom of my can is down on the top plane. The only thing I need to do now is constrain rotation. So let's see how we can do that. I think what I'll do is I will constrain the front plane of the can to the right plane. Say OK. The 
items. To clear those selections, front plane to right plane. I will set an angle of zero and say OK. Now I'm fully defined again. Very nice. Let's get rid of these awful planes. Actually, we're going to have to bring them back for one more thing. Let me turn those planes back on. We're going to need a drawing plane. So I'm going to click on Reference Geometry and Plane. I'm going to choose the front plane and the cylindrical face. Now I have a tangent plane that I can draw on. I'm going to change the angle to zero degrees. And I'll say OK. Now I'm going to create a sketch on plane one. Since I'm in sketch mode, I'm going to use my old friend the rectangle. Not too bad, so I need to fully define this. So let's see, I'll make this two and an eighth. Make the top two inches wide. One inch over. I think now would be a good time to get rid of the plans. Okay, so now we can choose things a little easier. I think I'll smart to mention off the bottom of my can. Three quarters of an inch up, that's fine. And I'm fully defined. I will exit the sketch and I'll do insert, assembly feature, and cut. I'm going to do a cut extrude right into the can. And I've made a very nice window to start assembling. Okay, so when you go to put your crankshaft in, you're going to do the same thing. You'll put a hole right over here using a tangent plane. We can sketch on this face. I'll say OK. You can do a cut extrude to open up the top of the can. And pretty soon you'll have a model that's ready to insert into your Sterling engine assembly. Okay, now notice the most important thing. If I open the can component, Everything is still intact. Okay. So the changes all reside at the assembly level. There's nothing happening to that component. So that's again what I'm expecting for your Sterling engine project. So thank you for watching.